This is some of my orange boot collection. <laughs> um, generally, they're comprised of uh, leathers that look orange, start orange, and are in many cases very orange. Uh, obviously from different makes, uh, different types, different construction methods. Let's go through them. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. Uh, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajit people. Now, today I'm going through uh, my orange collection of boots. Uh, I really do like the color orange. I mean, I like black boots, but I really prefer the sort of brown to tan range. And uh, some of the tan kind of boots you get do have that perhaps sandy, browny look. But where they go towards an orange end of the spectrum, I, that's, those are the ones that I, that I really like because I think they pop. They uh, go with almost any kind of outfit that you'd like. So I thought what I'd do is take you through uh, these, these orange boots, how they've worn, how they've changed in time, and why I like them. Uh, I'm going to do it in categories. So let's get rid of most of these and we'll do the first category. So the first category are boots that I say start orange and then start to go brown. Uh, in this case, they're both from Grant Stone. Now, I do like Grant Stone as a brand, but I've never been paid by them. So I feature Grant Stone sometimes because I do like them for their fit and for their design. So that being said, let's go through these two. These are both in Badalasi Carlo's saddle tan, veg tan leather. You wouldn't say by looking at them because the color is actually quite different. Let me take the uh, diesel boot first in the saddle tan. When this first came to me, it was really quite a bright orange. And I, and I did like it. Uh, I preferred it, in fact. But after, what is it now, three years of wear, uh, I think it's three years away. Uh, after, uh, I would say, conditioning three times maybe, four times, they have started to darken. In fact, when I first started going into collecting boots, and this was one of my first purchases, I followed the advice that some people give you of conditioning your boots as soon as you get them, because the theory is that the leather might have been hanging in the tannery for a while, and then the bootmaker would have bought the leather and would have been hanging in the factory for a while. Uh, and then the boots would be made and then put in boxes and uh, put on the shelf for a while. I think with these modern uh, small batch manufacturer on time, just in time uh, uh, manufacturer type bootmakers, I don't think that's true anymore. But anyway, I did believe that first up. So as soon as I got these, I conditioned them with Venetian shoe cream and they immediately darkened. Uh, not as bad as this, but they immediately went from a fairly bright orange to a more dulled orange. Uh, I did like the look, so I wasn't too sad about it. But the more I wore the saddle tan, the browner it got. And you can see now uh, what a sort of almost a, what would you call it, a almost mid-brown color. Now, this field boot uh, is a lot newer. I think it's only about a year old but it's darkened just as much. It's only been conditioned once, and I conditioned this with a little uh, Neat's Foot oil because I wanted to take it outdoors in our winter and got it really wet. So this boot, although being like two years younger than, than this boot, uh, has got, I would suggest, browner. There's, there's elements of the orangeness showing through, but I think this is a lot darker than, than the diesel. And the reason for that is, uh, I, I put a layer of uh, Neat's Foot oil on it, but then I took it on an adventure. <laughs> and I went walking in uh, the uh, southern forest down south of WA, uh, and I got it very wet, I got it covered in mud, I went through creeks, I went through uh, running brooks, I, I crossed shallow rivers. Kept my feet dry, but it really did stain the boot. I do like the color. I think this color for this sort of uh, boat shaped hunting boot design, mock toe, is just perfect. Uh, what do you wear with it? 
I think with uh, the Grandstone Diesel, I think it's a lot more uh, casual wear. I wouldn't necessarily wear it with a suit, although I have done. Didn't work quite well. But I think this is business casual, this is smart casual, this is uh, going out to dinner casual, uh, and you can wear it to the office as a smart casual outfit. The field boot, on the other hand, I mean, look at it. It's casual and outdoorsy. You'd wear this with jeans, with uh, uh, hunting pants maybe, whatever they are. Um, <laughs> you'd wear them with brown work, work pants. Uh, olive greens would look good with these. And um, in, in colder weather, uh, certainly a, a, a fleecy shirt and a, and a wax jacket of some kind. Uh, casual and outdoorsy. Okay, so let's look at the next category. These are boots that I say start orange and generally stay orange, or at least has some orange background in it. So the Thoroughgood Mokto, the Red Wing 875 Classic Mokto, uh, and the Parkhurst Veg Retan Leather from Seidel. Let's go through these. So um, the Thoroughgood Mokto, softest oil tan tumbled leather you could ever get in a work boot. Uh, very, very padded on the inside, so extremely comfortable. Uh, medium soft wedge sole, so very comfortable underfoot. What would you wear this with? Uh, I, look, I think it's work clothes. Uh, uh, you, there, are, there are much more used and abused pairs of these uh, worn by American workers who, who would wear this as a work boot, not in Australia. Uh, we would be a bit more hipsterish with it here. But nevertheless, I think this is a jeans, work clothes kind of boot that you wear uh, in, in a work clothing kind of way. Next one is the Red Wing 875. Very similar in look. Uh, and I believe this is the first mock toe, and then Thoroughgood came through uh, very quickly thereafter. But very classic, very orange in this Oro Legacy leather. I think the clue is in the Oro Legacy. Uh, very well-constructed boot, a little bit of a terror to break in, <laughs> I think for two reasons. One is the Oro Legacy, which is really nice and supple now, was quite a thick tempered leather to break in. And because of the, the thickness of the uh, veg insole and midsole and the rubber midsole and the thick wedge made it quite tricky to break in at the flex point. Once you do go through that pain, this is a comfortable boot. Um, nothing much I can say about it other than uh, maybe that this is really a casual boot that you'd wear with uh, rugged casual or reasonably smart but not, not, uh, not office casual. You certainly wouldn't wear it to the office, I don't think. In Australia, it's a very hipster boot. Nobody wears this to go to work. Uh, a lot of people in the, in the wine country down south wear it with skinny jeans <laughs> and I think it looks good like that anyway if you if you don't sort of turn your nose down at it. And the next one that I have in this category, as I said it mellows but it still stayed orange, is this Parkhurst Richmond boot in Seidel's Veg Retan. Now my understanding is this, this um, is a natural leather that's first chrome tanned and then all the salts are washed from it and it's then veg tanned as a retan which preserves it. And the interesting thing is creates a temper that's very reminiscent of veg tan because it's quite, um, what shall I say, not pliable. It took a while to get this boot comfortable, but as you can see, it now rolls very nicely. It creases where I need it to crease. Uh, in terms of caring for this, I find that I like the way Parker sends them out in this sort of matte look. I did condition it several times with uh, Venetian shoe cream, which I found made it quite a glossy leather, you know, with a sheen. And when I was talking to Andrew, he suggested that I wanted, what I do is hit it with a hairdryer. And as I did, the waxes on the surface got soaked, uh, absorbed back into the leather. So now it's come back to this very nice sort of matte look, which I prefer. Definitely a casual boot, uh, but you can wear it with very smart casual. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily wear it to a professional office, but you know, if you work at a, at a surveyor's office or something like that, yeah, perfectly acceptable. Really lovely boot, one of my favorites. Okay, so let's get rid of these and go on to the next uh, category. These are boots in 
Horween Natural Dublin Leather. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Horween and its Natural Dublin, but this is the Parkhurst Allen Boot in Natural Dublin, or Natty Dub as we call it. And this is Oak Street Bootmaker's Trench Boot, uh, also in, in uh, Natural Dublin. And you can see, this is I think about two years old, and this is uh, very new, just a few months old. I think you can see the difference that wearing it in changes the color, but they stay orange. Uh, let's go through these in turn. But, oh, but before, Natural Dublin. Halloween, uh in Chicago makes Natural Dublin. They're the famous makers of Chrome XL. Now, Natural Dublin is a progression of leathers. They start with Essex leather, which I think is a full veg tan, unwaxed leather. Uh, they then go on to Dublin, which is Essex leather with waxes put into it. Uh, and then it'll go on to a third leather with much more waxes. But the, the most popular, I think, of that, that progression of leathers is Dublin leather. It's, it's, a, it's a veg tan leather with waxes. So you can see that it really does patina like a veg tan leather does. There's a lot of rolls in it. There's a lot of highs and lows in coloring. And as a natural leather, uh, it does pick up some staining. That's a little drip of oil. Uh, I think it was motor oil on this side and I think it was cooking oil on this side. <laughs> um, and it, it picks up some scratching and, you know, um, like here where I might have caught it on, on, a, on a brake pedal or maybe on the uh, uh, rolling wheel of my office chair. So it picks up a lovely patina as, as you start wearing it. Uh, the Parkhurst Allen model, this is an older 602 lasted model, is superbly comfortable. Uh, it has Parkhurst proprietary studded uh, uh, outsole, similar to day night. And the shape and design of this plain toe service boot is aesthetically a casual boot. You can wear it with chinos, you can wear it with jeans, uh, you can wear it with browns, blacks, all go with this. Um, the Oak Street Bootmaker's Trench Boot, now this, interestingly enough, is one of Oak Street Bootmaker's first hand-lasted models. This is an older boot, um, probably a couple of years older than that one. And you can see that the creasing and the movement around the ankle and the actual patina is, is quite different. And I'm, I'm expecting the Parkhurst to pick up these sorts of highs and lows and ridges and the, and the different, uh, uh, different coloration as it creases. The Elston last is quite wide. And if you look down at your own feet, you can see this is a much more sort of, I wouldn't call it a clown, but definitely a wider toe box. And for that reason alone, I think this is actually a lot more casual uh, than the Parkhurst. So I, I, I could wear this with chinos, but I tend to wear these with jeans and, and uh, denims and, and darker kind of jeans, five pocket pants, that sort of thing. But in reality, I think with both of these, they are fabulous as contrasting colors. So um, if you wear these with uh, black pants, black jeans, or very light colors, sands and khakis and so on, they're really perfect and they pop on your feet. Now, uh, let's take a look at the uh, leather before it becomes Dublin leather. This is an outlier in my orange boots. This is uh, Grant Stone's uh, diesel boot in tan Essex. So I was telling you about Horween's uh, Dublin leathers, uh, which are slightly waxed after being veg tan. Well, this is the first iteration. This is veg tan with not a lot of waxes. One thing Grand Stone does though, is before they send it out, they have a final quality control look at the boot before they actually put it in the box to send to you. And one of their quality control steps, I think, Grandstone strikes me as, as a, uh, a boot maker with almost checklisted steps that it takes. And one of the steps they take before they pack it is they do put a layer of wax on it and polish it. And to me, that sort of kind of defeats the purpose of, of uh, veg tanned leathers because this does come through as being a lot glossier than the Parkhurst. But you can see that in wearing this, this is a lot more orange than the, um, the, the Dublin leathers as they age. And when I wear this outside, I might be walking down the street and 
I get a lot of compliments on this boot, uh, even from very old men who are wearing flip-flops. <laughs> so uh, it, it obviously attracts attention. I think this is clearly a smart casual boot. You would wear it with chinos. I do a lot. You wear it with khaki chinos, olive chinos, uh, dark blue navy chinos. I also wear this with jeans, obviously, uh, and, and brown pants, brown five pocket pants. Uh, jeans, not so much, because I think they show off a little too much under the uh, uh, a denim, unless it's a very light, uh, light wash denim. Anyway, uh, I think we should now go to boots that are so orange they make your eyeballs hurt. Here they are. Uh, Iron Williams Warwick leathers. Warwick is the colour. And then the famous pumpkin colour of the Alden 405. So let's deal with the Alden first. Classic mock mock toe. The stitching here does not attach any leather to anything. It is actually a plain toe boot in which they've run a, a couple of stitches through the vamp. Now, some people consider this. It's very difficult to be innovative in boot design because just about any boot has already been designed. Service boots have been designed. Chelsea boots have been designed. Work boots have been designed. Logger boots have been designed. Um, mock toe boots have been designed. This is probably the last innovation around. I mean, um, I guess Red Wing innovated with the wedge sole. But this came through in the, I believe, 1950s. The innovation is that it's a plain toe boot and they just put a decorative stitch around there to look like a mock toe. Clearly a casual boot. Wear them like uh, Indiana Jones does, under khaki chinos, work shirts, and a leather jacket. Can't go wrong there. But they also work with tweed suits, for example. Uh, you can imagine a professor walking around a, a university college wearing these under tweed. They work perfectly. In this pumpkin color, I probably wouldn't wear them with a suit, but in the 403 brown Chrome XL, I think it's doable. Now, let's look at these two very orange boots. Um, Iron Williams calls th this color Warwick. Not quite sure why. They're both yearling leathers, meaning that uh, they come from a one-year-old calf. I'm guessing the calf is uh, venturing towards being veal on your plate. And this is the result from the offcut. So yearling leather is incredibly soft. Like it, it feels, I can't describe how soft it feels. It's really smooth, but also just a, the unlined softness in these is just super pliable. And the, and the, the temper is uh, supple and the hand is just smooth, lo really lovely. This is the RM Williams King Scott. Uh, it's a lace-up boot from RM Williams, obviously, with a uh, soft commander sole or softish uh, red brick commander sole. Uh, I would wear these work boot style, so definitely jeans, work pants, uh, fleece shirts, work shirts, that kind of thing. This is the uh, comfort turnout boot, round toe, quite a quite a slim last. I mean, if you if you look at these two lasts, they're both eight D in, in um, R.M. Williams' case, it's 8G, but they're obviously a, a much slimmer last. Uh, round toe, not the chisel toe like in the uh, Craftsman, uh, but otherwise Chelsea design. Really lovely, fits me really well, very comfortable. This, I think, is a outback kind of boot. So jeansy, uh, moleskin trousers, uh, brown five pocket pants, that kind of thing. Um, and you can wear this to the office quite easily. Um, I probably would not wear that under a suit because of the color. And if this was in black or something like that, no problem. If this was in Aaron Williams chestnut, no problem. But I think this red it says no suit. Uh, smart casual, business casual even with, with gray um, wool pants, fine. Oh, <laughs> they're back. Uh, so to summarize, why do I like orange leathers. Look, I, I think one of the reasons I like them, the main reason I like them, is that they really pop in your outfits. And the best way to wear them is understated colors. So uh, dark denim is fantastic with both of these. Um, understated khaki chinos is great with these. Uh, olive will go with these. Uh, and definitely black. Black jeans, 
really work well with all of these or black five pocket pants. Uh, I also like the way that the, the orange leathers develop. Most of them start quite orange and not many stay orange. They go browns, they go uh, scuffed and lovely, they fade a little bit even, uh, they become uh, quite variegated in, in their patina, some shine, some go matte. So the development of the leathers is really quite lovely, I, I find, and, and also because many of them are, tend to be natural, they tend to be undyed. Let them stand out. I think that's the way to go with orange boots. So I, I hope you like my uh, exploration of my sub-collection of orange boots in my big boot collection. If you like, you know what to do. Click on the like button and I hope you subscribe as well so that you can see more of my boot videos as they come out every week. Until then, take care and see you soon.